Good morning, dear students. Today, let us do Act Three, Scene Four. There was just a little portion of it remaining to be done on video. It had already been done during the online classes. A video had been made on it, and I had sent it across for your reference. Notes have already been given. This I am doing for some students who, for some reason, had missed out on the online classes, as well as for those students who had attended the classes. This is for your reference. Follow it, learn from it, and prepare well for your examination. If you remember from the previous video, we had stopped at a point in the story. Where Porsche had instructed Balthazar, her manservant, to go and deliver a letter which she had given to him to her cousin, Doctor Valerio, an eminent lawyer, an expert, well-known doctor of law, and bring back. The documents, garments, clothing that he would give him, return back as quickly as possible to Belmont, and meet them at the Tranet or this landing place, or you can say a little harbour where they would be waiting for him in a ferry boat. Do it as quickly as possible. Now, what is this uh, this ferry boat? There used to be, according to the play, these little boats which would carry people from Belmont to Venice, to and from. So that is the ferry boat which is being referred to here as. Following Porsche's instructions, Balthazar had left immediately for Padua. After he had left, Porsche turned to Narisa and this is what she had to say. So please have a look at page 60, Act 3, Scene 4. Porsche spoke to Narisa. And said, Come on, Narisa, I have work in hand that you yet know not of. We will see our husbands before they think of us. Meaning to say that she urged Narisa to go along with her as quickly as possible and not waste any time. She had planned to tell her that she had a great plan in her mind regarding which Narisa did not have any knowledge or did not know anything about it. Uh, she went on to tell Narisa that they would be able to meet and see their husbands much before their husbands could have expected them to do so. And Narisa said in reply, questioning her, shall they see us? They is referred to as Graciano and Bassano. So she questioned and asked Porsche, would their husbands really meet and see them much before their husbands could have expected them to do so? And Porsche said in reply, they shall marry sir, but in such a habit that they shall think we are accomplished with that we lack. Meaning to say, yes, she said, to Narisa that their husbands would be able to meet and see them much before their husbands could have expected them to do so. But in that case it would be a little different in the sense that they would be dressed up as young men in the costume and clothing of young men. Therefore their husbands would fail to recognize them as Portia and Narisa. Instead, 
believe them to be as real men, take them to be as real men with all those manly qualities, all those masculine qualities which young men of their age possessed or had, which they, being women in reality, lacked or did not have. Then she went on to say the following to Narisa and this is what she said, I'll hold thee any wager when we are both countered like young men, I'll prove the prettier fellow of the two and wear my dagger with the braver grace and speak between the change of man and boy with a reed voice and turn two mincing steps into a manly stride and speak a phrase like a, fa like a fine bragging youth. So what it all means? She said that when they would be dressed up as young men in disguise, she was willing to bet with her any amount that she would prove to be the smarter one between them both. Then she had gone on to say that when they would be in disguise as men, she would carry her dagger, a dagger is a small sharp knife, with a certain grace of boldness and pride, just like young men, boastful men, did of their age to prove their worth among friends. Then she said next that when they would be dressed up as young men, she would speak in the tone of that the same tone as if her voice was breaking or changing, transforming from a young boy's voice to take the tone of a mature man's voice. But she said that she would speak in a squeaky manner, in a reed voice, meaning though her voice would sound as if it was breaking, transforming, changing from a young boy's voice to take the tone of a mature man's voice, but it would be a little shriller, a little higher than the tone in which men spoke for she was a woman and she would not be able to speak exactly in the natural tone that of young, mature men. Young in the sense, not young, but mature men. So, you can hear now, have a look. And then she went on to say uh, that she would turn two mincing steps into a manly stride. She said that when they would be dressed up as young men, she would walk like the young men did. She would take one long step in place of the two little steps which women usually took when they walked, which they as women took when they walked. She would take one long step in place of the two steps which women like them usually took when they walked. Then she went on to say next uh, that when they would be dressed up as young men in disguise as young men, she would speak a phrase like a fine bragging youth. She said that she would speak and refer to the fights which she 
had gotten in the past just like a fine boastful young man did in order to prove how brave and strong he was among friends. She would do the same. She would talk about uh, the fights which she had gotten into as a young man in the past just to prove how brave and strong he was like the, the bragging young men who did so in order to prove their courage and strength. And then she went on to say that when they would be dressed up as young men in disguise as young men, she would tell quaint lies how honourable ladies sought my love which I denied. They fell sick and died. I could not do with all. Then I'll repent and wish for all that that I had not killed them. And what did she need to say by that? When they would be dressed up as young men in disguise as young men, she would tell self-made stories, fanciful stories, false stories, spin yarns of how beautiful, honourable women from the higher class in society came seeking for his love, proposing to him, expecting that he love them back, required their love, respond accepting their love and love them back, that is the meaning of required, return their love, which when he refused or denied, they had fallen sick, gotten into depression and died of the depression. He, in that case, how he had been helpless because it had been beyond his control and all he could do was to regret and feel guilty, repent that they had not died for his sake, that he wished that he had not been the reason for their deaths, that they had not died for his sake and nothing more than that for it was beyond his control she would say and then she would go on to say when they would be dressed up as young men or in disguise as young men that 20 such little fanciful, purely means little, fanciful, false, self-made stories she would share with other men, other real men and these men on hearing her story would take him to be very young in a way immature and that it had just been a year that he had passed out of school. Next she went on to say that she had in her mind a thousand such impractical silly schoolboyish amateurish A-M-A-T-E-U-R-I-S-H unpolished impractical schoolboyish silly pranks which she would practice just like the boastful young men of her age did as they 
indulged in these raw tricks. She, when they would be dressed up as young men, she would practice them too, put them into action too. Bragging, boastful young, silly, inexperienced men, young men. She said that she had uh, in her mind a thousand such silly, impractical, schoolboyish, amateurish tricks which boastful young men usually did or practiced, which she would also practice when they would be dressed up as young men in disguise as young men. And Mary says, then questioned her innocently that why shall we turn to men? She asked her, why would they disguise themselves? as men. Why would they disguise themselves as men? But Osho pretended to think that Narisa meant why would they turn to men means take young men to be loved by them, take them to be, be their lovers. Uh, and in this regard, Osho went on to tell Narisa that she should be shameful for what she had said and what kind of a strange question was that she had asked as if she was in the company of a dirty minded person indicating to her as if she meant to say that she was uh, teaching her all those dirty things and she had influenced her to ask that kind of a question which she had asked. So that is the meaning of five. What a question is that? If thou wert near a lewd interpreter, lewd uh, dirty, obscene, Interpreted in this case, uh, someone with a dirty mind, or she said, as if Narisa was in the company with someone who had a very dirty mind and who had influenced her and who had taught her all these dirty things and she had asked that is why such a dirty question she meant to say, just to play the fool in a light-hearted manner, jokingly, not to hurt her or demean her in any way. And then she went on to tell Narisa, urging her to go along with her as quickly as possible, not waste any time. I'll tell thee all my whole device. She said that she would share with her and tell her all that she had planned in her head or the plan that she had in her mind when they would be in the carriage uh, that was waiting at the gate of the park. Therefore she asked her and therefore hastily, hastily means she asked her to quickly follow her and not waste any time for we must measure 20 miles today for she said they had to travel and cover a distance of 20 miles that day, there was no time to waste. So till there gentlemen, now if you have any questions, if you have any doubts, please feel free to let me know. I will be very happy to solve your problems and clear your doubts. Prepare well for your exams. Thank you gentlemen.